where is this exactly? Common. What, Coates Common? What? <laughs> yeah. Quiet! Which side? What? Which side of the common? Division Street side? Yeah, I think. Neither. Look, I've got to go. Right, can I have your name, please? You better hurry. Hello? Great. Filthy night. Can't wait to get home and have a hot bath. No stamina, you young officers. All units from Sierra Oscar, Coates Common, Division Street. Possible assault. Young female collapsed. We'll take that. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 3. Yeah, go ahead, Polly. Yeah, we'll take that one, Sarge. Thanks, Polly. That should make his night. If you check the pub, I'll go across the path to the pond. Right, Sarge. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 3. Anything, Paul? Nothing! Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Matthew, no sign of this girl. Can you repeat the location? Well, the informant gave the Division Street side of the common, that's all. Talked about a bench. And do we know where the call was made from? From a call box near the Bear's Head, Grant Lane. This is crazy. She could be anywhere. Is it worth checking the footpath again? Uh, it's probably just a wind-up, Matt. Sarge? Yeah? I found a bag. Where was it? It was just there, behind that bench. Here, Sarge, over here. She's here. Sierra Oscar from 469. Urgent message. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, we found the Hello? girl. She's unconscious. Hello? Ambulance Can required. You hear me? Coat's common. We're at the junction of... Grant Lane and... Division Street. Division Street. Is she alive? <gasps> Anything? Come on. Come on. Come on, then. this time. This time. Sierra Oscar from 469. Yeah, go ahead, Polly. Can you take up that ambulance, Sarge? We don't have much time. I've got a faint pulse. OK. You all right now? I'll go back to the road and wait for the ambulance. Yeah, good. Do you know what state we're going, sir? Well, it doesn't sound hopeful, sir. Ambulance is taking its time. Weather doesn't help. No. You should be knocking off, man. I'll see it through. At least I can do. Any ID? Yeah, Claire Jackson. You got an address? Banks Avenue. Do you want me to inform the parents? Yeah, get them to go straight to Camley General. Right. I'm going to go to the hospital. You get all the best jobs, Sarge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How is she? You don't want to know. It's 42.5. That's all right. Hi, Cathy. Oh, what are you doing here? Uh, how's the girl going on? We did everything we could. I'm sorry. Did you know her? I just brought her in. She was unlucky. Usually we pump their stomachs and send them home a bit wider. We got to her earlier. Thanks. <laughs> you look terrible. 
terrible, Bob, if you don't mind me saying. It's been a long day. We should get home and get an early night. Sergeant Cryer. Yes. They said my daughter was drunk. That can't be right, can it? Wouldn't you rather do this somewhere private? I just want to know what happened to her. Your daughter was found on Coates Common about 45 minutes. Was she alive when we found her? We couldn't find the pulse at first. We got her heart restarted. And had she been drinking? Yes. I'm afraid she'd been there for some time. I'm sorry. But it's not possible. She was staying over with her friend. She's only 14. Was her skirt on? I don't know. Was she attacked, do you think? It's hard to say. We will know better when we start. Someone must have been with her. Not when we found her. We did do everything we could. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Thank you. Is there anyone we can call for you? It's all right. My husband's on his way back from Birmingham. Sarge. Yeah, we better get back. just been an accident. I mean, she might have just collapsed. I don't think so. She couldn't have got in that state on her own. Are you sure you're all right? Nothing like a dead kid at the end of a shift. So we do right up as a sudden death then? Well, I think the parents deserve some sort of explanation, don't you? Yeah, but without any witnesses, Sarge. Perhaps the parents can give us something. Did she have any boyfriends? All right. I guess I'm sweet. We'll be right in the morning. Thank you. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Inspector Monroe. I was very sorry to hear about your daughter. Well, thank you. Would like to come through? Can I help? I went to see Claire this morning. Can I get you some tea? Um, no. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, um, I thought you might be able to clear up some details for me. If I can. Well, my wife told me that Claire had been drinking and um, that, that she choked on her own vomit. And uh, your officer, Sergeant Cryer? That's right. Yeah, yeah, he tried to resuscitate her on the spot. Uh, well, what I can't understand is how she got all those injuries. Injuries? Yes, uh, when I saw her today, well, she looked like she'd been kicked down the stairs. Uh, her chest was all black and blue, and uh, they said that she had some broken ribs. How did she get like that? Sergeant Cryer would have made every effort to save your daughter, and if that resulted in some injury, I believe he was fully justified. Well, all I know is that yesterday I had a 14-year-old daughter, and today she's lying dead, covered in bruises, with her skirt all torn now. Either somebody assaulted her or your officers need to go on a first aid course. Sergeant Cryer is one of our most experienced officers. Look, I just want to make it clear that I want whoever killed Claire found and prosecuted. That's all. You have my personal assurance that we will investigate your daughter's death. But well, we have to face the possibility that this was a tragic accident. Uh, this Sergeant Cryer told my wife that there'd been some sort of a delay. There was a delay, as I understand it. Why? Well, the person who called the police only gave the vaguest of locations. It took us some time to find your daughter. How long? From the initial call, about 25 minutes. But it, you're saying that you knew my daughter had collapsed and you took 25 minutes to get to her? The conditions were poor. She's still been alive. Well, under the circumstances, our officers were lucky to find her at all. Oh, that's supposed to be some kind of consolation, is it? No. So you take 25 minutes to find Claire and then this crier breaks free of her ribs? Uh, that's not what happened. How many officers did you have looking for her? Well, we weren't to know that your daughter... How many? Two. Two officers to find a dying girl with a common that's I mean, what kind of a farce is this? The delay wasn't our fault. Well, whose fault was it? She would still be alive if you would have got there in time. She would still be alive if your officers could do some basic first aid. We tried to save your daughter's life. 
I want to see a seat of officer. I want to make a complaint. Mr Jackson, I'm sure that on reflection... On reflection, my daughter is dead! When we know all the facts... Look, if you think you can cover this up, you can think again. Now, I want this crime prosecuted for negligence. Is that clear? Bob, take a seat. Bob. Sir. I've uh, asked you to come in because we've received a formal complaint against you. A complaint? About what? Claire Jackson's death. Claire's father is alleging that the delay in reaching Claire led to her death. Well, he's right. We were given an imprecise location, but we can't be blamed if that cost us time. Well, that's true, but I still missed the girl. I must have walked right by her. He also claims that you caused unnecessary injuries while trying to resuscitate her, including breaking her ribs. She was dying. I did what I had to. It's a stupid allegation, Bob. But we've got to go through the motions. Look, have you got any idea how the girl ended up in the park? Not yet. Polly Page has gone over to see the parents. The girl was left for dead by someone. We could be looking at involuntary manslaughter. She's very pretty. Thank you. I, I thought you might need a photograph for... Um, I suppose not. No, it could be very useful. Well, there's the one from school. It's probably the best. Can you tell me anything about her school friends? I hardly ever see them. She usually takes them straight up to her room. But you mentioned that she might have stayed over with someone last night. Yes, uh, Alison. Alison Reed. Does she live local? Thompson Street, number one. Have you been in contact with her? I spoke to her mother last night. And, uh, I said some things I probably shouldn't have. Did she tell you where Claire and Alison had been? She said they went out to McDonald's about seven, but that um, Claire had felt a bit ill, so uh, she said she'd come home. But she didn't return here? Well, I was at work till ten. The first I knew was when you knocked on the door saying she was in hospital. Did Claire often go out in the evenings? Um, well, I suppose so. We had this, um, this ten o'clock curfew. Did she have any boyfriends? She's only just 14. So you don't think there was anyone special? Lots of kids get drunk. But they don't die, do they? Alison Reed. Is it about Claire? Yeah. Can we come in? Yeah. Thanks. Are your parents home? No, my mum's at work. Alison, we're trying to find out what Claire was doing before she died. You told Mrs Jackson that you went to McDonald's and Claire went home feeling unwell. Everyone's going to blame me, aren't they? No, Alison, we're not here to accuse you of anything. We just need to know what Claire was doing. Her parents need to know what she was doing. Claire could always get served in pubs with enough makeup on. It's been out sometimes, just for a couple of drinks. And where did you go? To the Bear's Head. We're usually back by ten. So what was different about last night? Claire met this bloke. He chatted her up a bit, that's all. And you left together? No. That's the point, isn't it? You see, we didn't. I knew I had to get back. I told Claire. She'd already had a few. She said she'd get a taxi. So you left her? I thought he'd get her home. Well, didn't you ring to check she'd got there? I tried, but there was no answer. And then Mrs Jackson rang and told my mum Claire was dead. I said, Mrs Jackson thinks it's all my mum's fault. Alison, what's this man's name? <laughs> Come on, Alison. Claire is dead. What is his name? Mike. Any second name? I don't know. Alice. I don't know. Well, what did he look like? He was quite tall. He had light brown hair. Well, how old was he? About 18. 19, maybe. All right. I think that'll do for now. We might have to come back and ask you a few more questions later. Are you going to tell my mum about the pub? It'll be made public if there's an inquest. No. Seem very sure. I didn't see anyone like that. Well, can you ask your regulars? Anyone see a couple of young girls in here last night? Fat chance. <laughs> Look, 
This girl was found dead, just over the road. Look, we was busy last night, but I'm sure she wasn't in here. All right. We're also trying to trace a man called Mike. Fair hair, 19. People come here to drink. I don't keep attendance records. Well, that was a waste of time. Well, he wasn't going to tell us that he was serving an underage girl, was he? Sarge, he was behind the bar last night. That's worth a go. Excuse me. Yeah? Were you working here last night? Yeah, I was, yeah. Did you see this girl? Yeah, that's Claire. What's she done? She died last night. She's dead? Yeah. How did you know her? She used to come in quite a bit. How often? Oh, once or twice a week. And did you see her last night? Yeah, she was with her maid and a couple of blokes. And did you know these men? One of them, Stuart. He's Alison's boyfriend. And the other one? No, I don't know him. He might have been in once or twice before. And did they leave together? No. Alison and Stuart would have gone before nine. What time did Claire leave? Not sure. A bit before ten, maybe? She left with the other bloke. Was she drunk when she left? She didn't look too good. But then he'd been buying Bacardi and Cokes all night. Alison's boyfriend? Yeah. Can we come in? Alison, why did you lie about who you were with last night? I didn't. We've been to the Bear's Head, Alison. We know you went there on a regular basis. So why did you lie? Stuart? I hope you'd like to join us. Right, we'll start again, shall we? Look, there's no point in asking us. We don't know how she ended up like that. Stuart? Headley. And how old are you, Stuart? Nineteen. How long have you been seeing Alison? About six months. And the four of you met up in the pub last night? Yep. Was it you who called the police, Stuart? No, look, we left before they did. And where did you go? Back to my flat. So, between the boyfriends and the trips to the pub, you and Claire had quite a social life. Everyone does it. Anyway, Claire's parents have never noticed. Why? Well, her dad works away a lot for his job. And her mum works late. She can't get back till ten some nights. Did you and Claire often chat up men in the pub? We like to have a good time, that's all. Anyway, I'll be 15 soon. You said this man's name was Mike. Had you seen him before? Well, he's been down the pub a few times. And he was Claire's boyfriend? He'd like to have been. But Claire wasn't interested. He didn't have a car, did he? So you both left Claire in this man's company, even though you knew she was drunk? Well, she wasn't legless, was she? Besides, she didn't want to come. What was this man's second name? I don't know. Well, I don't know him. Not really. Let me just see if I can make your position clear to you. You're a 19-year-old. You're having a relationship with a 14-year-old schoolgirl. You are obstructing a police investigation. Now you seem to be protecting a friend who got a schoolgirl drunk and then left her to choke to death. Just tell him! Look, his name's Mike Chambers. And where does he live? I don't know. But he works at a tyre centre on the high street. Mike Chambers. Yeah? Sergeant Cryer, WPC Page. Do you know a young girl called Claire Jackson? No, I don't think so. She's the 14-year-old that you were with last night. 14? You break? In the bear's head. Uh, what's all this about? She died last night. Died? Does that help your memory? Not very old, is she? I told you I don't know her. We have three witnesses that saw you in the pub with Claire last night. And one of them gave us your name. We talk around the back. Look, I had nothing to do with her dying. So you did know her? No, not really. I bought a drink. I didn't know she was 14. 
Was this just a one-off session, or do you usually get schoolgirls drunk? I bought a girl a drink, that's all. You're a liar, Mr Chambers. We know that you left the pub with Claire just before ten. No, I left on my own. And where did you go after the pub? I went home. She was getting embarrassing. I said I was going, she said she'd get a taxi. So she was so drunk that she was embarrassing you, but she was still capable of getting a taxi? I don't know, I just met her, hadn't I? I met a girl, bought her a drink and left. You can't blame me for what happened to her after that. I mean, it's not a crime, is it? So it's not your problem that a child in your care died? She wasn't in my care and she didn't look like a kid to me. She was 14 years old. She shouldn't have been in the pub in the first place then, should she? Now you listen to me! That girl died because of you. Now perhaps you would like to explain to her parents why you left their child to die when it would have been just as easy to let her live. Was it you who called the police? Do you know what manslaughter means? All right, we went on to the common. Is that when her skirt got torn? Wasn't she being cooperative enough? She knew what she was doing. After a bit, she said she felt sick and wanted to go home. And then she passed out. Well, that's when I went to the phone. At least I called her. I didn't just leave her there. That's got to count for something. You'd have told us where she was on the common. I'd had a few. But when I got back from the phone, she was lying on the ground. And I didn't know what to do. Don't you know any first aid? Why didn't you go to the pub for help? I didn't think. Oh, you I didn't know she'd die. I thought you'd get to her on time. Mr. Chambers, I want you to accompany us back to Sun Hill. You charge me, I, uh, I lose my job. I'm arresting you for manslaughter. You I, do not have to say anything. I didn't do anything. Save it. I didn't do anything. He's committed no crime, Bob. The girl died accidentally. Of course. The fact that he could have saved her counts for nothing. She went with him willingly. Look, you know the CPS is going to laugh in your face. I don't mind if you teach him a lesson. Just don't let it get out of hand and don't raise the parents' hopes of a prosecution, all right? Well, sir, Bob, I know you're busy, but I've got Dave Jackson in the front interview room. And what's the complaint now? I've just had a chat with him about the post-mortem. He's quite calm now, but you're under no obligation to see him. No, I'll see him, if you'll excuse me, sir. Mr Jackson. I'm Sergeant Cryer. Now, I understand you've made a complaint against me, so I don't think it's wise for us to be talking. I'm going to withdraw the complaint. I've seen the full post-mortem report, and, um... Well, they say that she stopped breathing sometime before you arrived. Anyway, your actions weren't what killed her. In the last 24 hours... I've just wondered how much I really knew Claire. Uh, I've been working away a lot, you see, and um, we had no idea that she was going to the pub. We thought she was still drinking milkshakes. <laughs> if it's any consolation, we do know who was with her. Or will he be prosecuted? If it was up to me, I'd have a go, but it's not my decision. And I'm afraid I don't think the CPS will think there's enough evidence of a criminal offence. Who was it? I can't tell you that. And if you find out who it is, I advise you to leave him alone. He's not worth it, really. Why did he leave her? He was drunk. Oh. Well, I'd better not take up any more of your time. No, no, that's all right. No, I'll promise the wife I'll be back. Look, Mr Jackson, if there's anything I can do... Um, the photographs. Do you still need the photographs? No, no, not at all. Uh, sorry about the complaint. 